this is Michael Jackson. This is Neverland yeah. Ranch. I want to see this. You got to see, see it. On. You got to see what's going on. I mean, especially then and every allegations are allegations. And they, yeah, if it's true, it's fucking horrible. But I still love the music and I got to see this. By the way, yeah. And I was, at that time, I was like, lock him up in a recording studio. <laughs> Hey there, how you doing? And welcome to Drinks with Johnny. Today on the show, I'm joined by actor Greg Grunberg, who you may know from Alias or the sh hit show Heroes back in 2006 to 2010. He's also been in a bunch of movies like Star Wars, Star Trek. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit more about that. But I'm also really excited for this one because I'm going to be talking about his podcast called Talk About It. Um, we'll get into a little bit more of that here in a minute, but I'm just really excited to have Greg on the show and talk about everything that he's been up to and make a new friend. Looks like he's, uh, oh yeah, looks like he's about ready to go, so let's start the show. Oh, Greg Grungberg, how the hell are you today, man? I'm good, man. So happy to make this happen, and, and I apologize to the moon and back, man, for like changing and then changing and changing. I, I, I seriously. No, dude, no worries at all. I appreciate it. I know you're, you're busy with a lot of stuff going on right now, like... I know we had, we were originally planning to do this tomorrow. You got to shoot. Um, uh, can I ask you what that's for? Is that under wraps right now or? Yeah, no, no, no. Um, it's shoot in quotes. I've been doing these game shows, um, and uh, one of which is twenty five words or less. The other is called uh, Pictionary, and of course they're pitching now a new game show, and they're interested in having me host it and or be a, cele a permanent celebrity panelist on it. And it's called Rhyme or Reason. It's an old show from the seventies. That sounds and, um, familiar, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's actually very cool. It was very risque and blue compared to today's standards. You watch an old sh show of it, and they're talking about Bush. Like the, you try and rhyme, <laughs> and it's like those limericks, yeah. and everything ends up either dick or butt or gay or this or that. It's just like that sounds like never. something my fans would like. So everyone will tune in. Hopefully, you get this you get this role and then uh, or this gig rather. And uh, yeah, everyone can do that. But now, no, now it's now it's going to be super conservative, and you know, and oh, and but really whatever. Did. Hopefully, it's a nighttime show, and it'll be a lot of fun. But I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, it's it's I'm shooting an HBO show right now um, called Duster. So I'm I'm sort of back and forth to Arizona, or we may shoot somewhere else. And that that I'm doing this new show called The Caregiver for the epilepsy community, which is near and dear to my heart, mm -hmm. um, which is awesome doing episodes highlighting caregivers around the country and giving them a day of like, you know, I'm a car guy. So I took this one dad out and we just drove these really cool cars and talked about our boys. And so anyway, it's been, uh, yeah, I'm busy, but you're busy, dude. Johnny, yeah. I'm so happy I'm here. Dude, again, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, so much to get into, obviously, here with your career, with uh, your, your uh, what do you call it, activism for epilepsy. I, I want to really get into that. Um, but before we do, you did just mention you're a car guy. And yeah. I'm also a bit of a car guy. I don't know. I, 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 I hate to say that I'm a car guy. If I'm in the presence of another real car guy, if that makes sense. I know. Sense. <laughs> I, it, 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 dude, it's so intimidating, isn't it? Like, <laughs> it <really> can be. <laughs> like, I watch, I watch, um, uh, it's, uh, I mean, I'll tell you, we have time. Okay. Absolutely. I watch Jay Leonard's Garage. I watch um, uh, Barn Fine Hunter. I watch all those shows. Like, I go down the path, right? And all those. Right. And, um, and I'm doing a car podcast that I'm actually starting with Chris Jacobs from uh, Overhauling. And oh, wow. So, yeah. But can I work on an engine? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, I have a great mechanic who's become a really good buddy of mine. And I, I don't know about you, you're, you're, you've got a higher net worth than me, but the, uh, I'm sure the I cars, that. I love cars. First of all, if I work on a movie or I work on a project and there's a car, I want to buy it. I want to mm -hmm. take it. I want to remember that show. I love cars that are characters in movies. They don't have to be the high end things. You know, I have. I have a 77 uh, F1, uh, F250 uh, pickup truck, red, beautiful. We used it in A Star is Born. It was Bradley Cooper's car, his character's truck in A Star is Born. And there's that iconic image outside the garage. You know he's killing himself. The dog and the truck are outside the garage. That's my truck. That's, <laughs> That's yours? My truck. So wait, wait, wait. Did, 
you used it in the film like you had it before or uh yeah so the way i've always been a fan of those i love old oh, pickup trucks. that's cool okay gotcha i love like if you and i opened a lot yeah i would want to open a lot that says practically classics and not that they're almost classics but that every one of them is a practical daily runner you can drive and not worry about and have to park so i own I, I love uh, Ford Broncos. I own a, a, an old, really old one that I bought when it, way before they became popular, um, a 69 Bronco. And then I've got two 96 Broncos and I've got this 77 pickup truck. So I'm driving to the set of Stars Born. I, I played the driver in that, in that sh- movie. Mm-hmm. And um, I parked it right by my trailer. And it was early on in the movie, a couple of days in. And Bradley, who's an old friend of mine, came out and he was like, what is this? And I said, what do you mean, dude? He goes, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's very original. It's got all the patina and a couple of dents and whatever. Oh, very cool. And he goes, I want this to be my truck for my character. Called the transpo guy over. And then uh, Gaga had come out and she was looking at it. And, you know, she's driving. She loves cars. And she's driving like a Lamborghini and like crazy cars. And he's got a G-Wagon, whatever. But sometimes it's those emotional, you know, vehicles that like really hit you. And that's what that is to me. So anyway, from that moment on, he was like, let's use it in the movie. And I'm like, sure. And so then that's how it ended up in the movie. Wow. That's cool, man. I I love, I love like a story like that. Not like it was brought in, you know, it gives a little bit of character to it. Right. Like that, that's awesome. And so when you say original, you said, and it's got some patina and dings in it. Is is the interior all interior, uh, all original as well? Or have you, have you, what kind of work I, I, have you had on this car? I guess. Yeah, I mean, if my if my tush is going to sit somewhere, I, mm. I, it better be good. It better be a comfy. <laughs> you want some comfy? All right, Greg likes yeah, it comfy. I mean, <laughs> I don't want a spring going through my thigh. So what I did is, um, I, I bought this actually from I, in Long Beach. I saw it on Craigslist, and I went down. Really proud old guy, and he was in construction, and um, he he. I, I I mean, I you know I've had it for years, but I bought it for like. 3500 bucks or something 3900 bucks and then it needed a bunch of engine work which i did and then in the interior i just said you know what i've got to so i so i made it red it's red i made red headliner which is not it's not that big of a headliner it's just mm-hmm. you know there and then uh, i redid the seats um and made them red so it's all red inside you know which is kind of the way i think it was originally um when i got it though there were holes throughout because he was a construction guy you know he didn't yeah, care yeah. but um, but yeah, it's just great to drive. I, I put an electric fuel injection mm-hmm. um, aftermarket thing on it, so it's reliable. So I can start it up and right. And and actually, now I rent it out. Um, there's a website that you can list your cars to be used in TV shows and movies. Oh, um, really? Yeah, and it's awesome. And and most of the time, I say no. But if it's something like a, a photo shoot for Christmas or it's some you know movie or or commercial or somewhere it's just going to be parked or whatever i'll rent it out and uh and it's a lot of fun and then when people find out that it's mine it's it's just it's funny that um i don't know her but drew barrymore used my my bronco my uh 96 bronco on her show because she, she was showing everybody the car that she first drove when she first got her license and that was it and so it was the same color and everything. So in the episode, she's driving it around. Um, Selena Gomez just rented and, and used my 69 Bronco in her show, uh, Selena and Chef. And she's Oh, wow. Yeah, because I mean, driving. I was just going to ask, was that Drew, Barry, that Drew Barrymore uh, one is for her daytime show that she's got now as well? And yeah. then Selena's, I have seen... I've not watched either one of these shows. I apologize, ladies, but I know <laughs> of them. You know, like it's uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's uh, I have seen the, the, the commercial that's running right now for Selena's newest season. She takes her mom and dad. This is how they explain it to me. She's taking her mom and dad and her friend down PCH, and she's in Malibu. She rented a house or something, but she's driving the Bronco on PCH. Mm. It's beautiful. My Bron- Bronco is just it's it's awesome. I love it, and she's driving it. And in the in the trailer for the thing she's like oh like as if she hit something and i'm like they didn't tell me she hit something like <laughs> i have to find this out watching the show that's amazing that's great i yeah that uh, so did it well do you know did it actually get hit or is it just like no yeah, yeah I, didn't I think it was so. something where she almost hit the camera or and she yeah, almost yeah. didn't she was yeah the producers obviously like to use that stuff a little bit Yo, more tell me teasers what do you you're a car guy <laughs> tell me what yeah. you like uh, well, I I grew up a, more of a Mopar guy. Uh, my I have two older brothers. One of them had a Dodge Dart. One of them had a Roadrunner. 
uh, 69 and a 70, I think, 70 dart, 69 Roadrunner, if I remember correctly. So they were working on them all the time. I, like you, I don't work on them myself. I, I could change oil probably and do a couple little things, but I can't like really yeah. work on it. I have a, I, I now own a, uh, a 61 Cadillac Eldorado uh, BRS. Oh. Oh, and, uh, dude! Yeah, it's the a it's fat a beautiful one. Car. It's a beautiful car. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna share you? pictures after this of, of our cars. By the way, that's yes, the only one I have. That's the only classic car I have. But it's it's an absolutely beautiful car. So, like I said, I started out with the Mopar stuff. Um, man, probably in like 2011, 2012, I was out on the road, and um, our guitar player, Sister Gates, had just gotten a Lincoln. And he was like, oh, having a classic car is the coolest thing ever. And I was like, man, I've always wanted a classic car. And I kind of forgot about it. And at that point, I had some money. And I was like, all right, well, I'll, I'm going to get a classic car too. And this one like just kept coming up on my searches. And it was a little bit more than I wanted to spend for my first classic car that I was going to own. And I was like, all right, all right. And then I finally just pulled the trigger on it. And I couldn't be happier now. But uh, it's So uh, did, it, it's did it need any work at all when you got it? A little engine work. So I, I, this is how sweet the deal was. It was sitting in a, uh, uh, a personal museum in Marietta, Georgia, just sitting there. So with oh like 34,000 miles on it. So a museum. It's like a it's personal museum. Be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the they had, and they because, because we all Johnny, we all have museums. Exactly. We're all Jay Leno, as you as you mentioned before. Uh, I was just out in uh, in Jersey, actually. Uh, Andy Wallace, the producer and, and mixer engineer, who's done a lot of stuff. He's worked with us since City of Evil in two thousand five. Yeah. He's got like two buildings on his property that are separate from the house that are called, that he calls his garages, and th- that's kind of what I. Well, it's kind of what I figure is called a, a private museum, right? And he's yes, got, it is. He's got old high, hand cranked uh, T, uh, Model Ts and stuff. He's his oh. his shit's next level. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm but, finding. I'm trying to find. You keep talking. I'm trying to find a photo. Yeah, yeah. I want to send you photos of this. Um, oh, please do, and we'll we'll throw them up in the in the YouTube thing here too. Yeah, but for sure. One of the things that I love about my car, and I think you mentioned you kept a kept yours uh, pretty original too. Is that idea of keeping them preserved as true to that era as you kind of like my interior is still the original interior Um, and it's and then the paint on the outside has been has been redone. But the person that had the car previous to me uh, took the time to get the factory paint. So it's like it's this heather color that's like gray silverish, but then in the right light has like a little bit of a pink hue to it. It's, it's, uh, it's, Come it's a gorgeous on. car. And I kept like, so the question I had for you though, yours are, are more practical cars, right? Like my, I'm not driving that boat around everywhere. Like I do sometimes, you know, but it's kind of more of a cruiser when you're doing a special thing along the, along the beach drive or something like that. PCH. I'm, I'm sure you, you, you know, we were just talking about, and, uh, uh, I didn't change the radio on it at all. I did, however, put like these these speakers in the back seat that just run off of a uh, off of a eighth inch cord to my phone, so that I could still listen to like nowadays like my phone and stuff in there. But it's not actually hooked up anywhere in the car. Did you do you still have like a a tape deck for that for that sixty sixty nine and that seventy seven? The sixty nine. I just sent it to you. Uh, right. The si- the sixty nine. Um, so law of many years ago, I've had that car for 25 years and, oh, um, beautiful color on that Bronco, dude. Is that gorgeous? Dude, the, oh, that powder, that's funny. Our drummer Brooks was just telling me uh, a couple of weeks ago, like, he was like, man, I think I'm ready for a classic car, but I, I want like a cool old Bronco. And I'm like, you want like, like a powdered blue or like a powdered orange one. Right. And he's like, yeah, this is exactly oh, wait, what he's so, talking so about. So by the way. I'm just going to throw this out. I might as well make some money on this podcast. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> here's, this is the one that I'm selling right now. Oh, what? Yeah, send me that one because I'll, I'll, I will. F- okay. Is that, the, is that one of the 96s you have? Yeah, that's one of the 96. That's a 96. It's gold. Yeah. It's, it's perfect. I and, like uh, that. And I'm selling it because I have another 96. I don't need two of those. But um. But like, so, so years, many years ago, I got an offer. There was a magazine. They were doing a shoot and they were like, Hey, um, do you want to be a part of this? Alpine wants to do a thing. And I was like, sure. So the 69 has an Alpine stereo in it, but it's in the center console. So my dash is really just, 
you know, it's just straight. It's got, it's just got metal, it, you know, very original, but not perfect. You know, mm -hmm. there, there are these new Broncos I'm sure you've seen that are just absolutely. Yeah. Stunning. I've seen them on the road, but I haven't been inside one yet. Cause I, I saw when they came back with them, I remember seeing the, uh, the commercials on TV and stuff. And I was like, Oh, that looks, that looks slick, man. I, I wonder what, yeah. they're, what they're like. No, but I'm talking about like, like, there's, there are companies now that are buying a Bronco like mine and completely retrofitting it. Oh no, I haven't seen this. Okay. Oh, uh, that, by the way, I'm about to throw you down a rabbit hole. It, it, they're go. incredible. I can't yeah, it's wait. a company called like vintage Broncos and like even the hand crank for the window, they set it up. So here's, the, here's the crank and here's the knob on it. Right. All you, you don't go around. All you do is go down and the window automatically goes down. Oh, but it still off. looks like it. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. It's that really is, cool. That's really cool. So I have a radio and I have an Alp full Alpine stereo in there, which is great because it has no top, you know? Um, oh, and then I put, um, yeah, in the, in the, in the, uh, red Bronco, I mean, in the red pickup truck, I put a, a newer stereo. It's just going to have Bluetooth. I got to hear, I got to hear my tunes. And, yeah. uh, um, by the way, do you know, uh, Corey Taylor? Slipknot? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, we've, yeah, we've so done a, a lot of stuff with, uh, uh, Stone Sour and we've done a couple of Slipknot festivals like together, but not festivals with Slipknot, but yeah. we've taken a, take it. I got to know Corey better when we did uh Stone Sour tours with them together. Yeah. He's, he's a buddy of mine. We're, we have a project oh, right together, a film, a film project, but he, um, I think he has a car too, if I'm not mistaken. I've thrown out his name because, you know, you're, you guys are music guys, but yeah. uh, he's, he's, dude, that guy's a great guy. He's, he's, I, he's I, awesome. He's very, he's always been very nice and very cool. Like I, yeah. I, I enjoy his company. What's the project yeah. you guys are on? Can you mention that? Or is it still? He is. Um, yeah. I mean, I can, I can sort of talk about, it. I think we're going to do, we might do a, uh, I, I hate to use the word pseudo, but a, one of those crowdfunding things just to get people interested because we're going to need a lot more money than, than what uh, the crowdfunding will be. But he is a massive fan of, horror and uh, you know and and movies like that i've done i've produced a few and when i attach myself to these smaller kind of genre films i, I i'll attach myself as a producer and then help guide it help i'll star in it if i can if there's a role and then i'll also um help cast it and i did that with big ass spider which is a classic mm -hmm. um if you haven't seen it you must see it it's great it's so much fun uh, um, i haven't yet but now i'm going to yeah I did a movie for a sci-fi channel called end of the world that I actually just revisited and it's so fun. It's so much fun. And it's, it's just so great. It was on the sci-fi channel and it's out there too. Those two movies you can see. Um, and then I just did a, a movie called max reload and the nether blasters, which is, uh, a, was so much fun. It, it's like, a um, it's like an old marriage of old video games, new video games and, and, uh, a video game coming to life kind of thing. But, um, but I, they're always there's always comedy, and I, I just I yeah. can't take these things too seriously, man. I, yeah. I, I I've got to have fun doing them, and and Corey and I just really clicked. We met because he's trying to get this thing going, and I and I'm a fan of his, and I was like, what? So immediately we became fast friends, and he's he's deep cuts, dude. He's like, I had a show called um, Geeking Out with uh, Kevin Smith, mm -hmm. where we would interview people and and go on the sets of our own movies and things, and that guy's deep cuts like that guy goes oh, yeah. back to the origin stories of movies and characters and things like that you just you're like where are these i mean i'm looking at your shirt right now and i'm just yeah. like you know he, he, <laughs> he knew you know everything i'm just a, a fan i can tell you who what actors played what I, I go back to the tv shows i was a bit of a comic book guy which was interesting doing heroes because that was all about comic books and stuff but um but but Corey and i he has an idea. He had an idea that's it's a it's a multi movie thing, um, and it's really cool. We 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 kind of wrote it together, and he came. It's his idea, but brought in a great writer. Now we have a great director who directed Big Ass Spider, Mike Mendez, and awesome. we're uh, we're about to go. So I'm really excited uh, Very to cool. make that movie with him. I'm gonna have to talk to him about that too to follow up with that and stuff. And well, uh, we're gonna want some music, dude. We're gonna yeah. need some music. Oh well, hey. You know, we might be able to work some of that. He knows a few people too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah, no, that's great. Um, I love that you mentioned the horror movies and stuff too. And then even heroes just there. Cause those are the kind of the things that uh, I first became a fan of you from was heroes was something that me and the wife watched. I mean, this is back in the day before streaming people where it was like, I waited every week to watch heroes. 
And uh, we were huge fans. Uh, my family, everybody would, it was one of the things like my brothers would text me, did you watch it yet? I mean, we uh, had DVR, awesome. so I'd like, you know, we, yeah, loved the show. You did a great job on that, by the way. Thank you. And um, Hollow Man was another movie that I, because getting in that horror world, that was one of the, yeah. that was one of the movies to me that I was, you know, I think I was in, in my teen years at some point and I saw that movie and it was the first depiction I had seen of the invisible man like that. And I remember like it was, especially for the time, even I think it still holds up. I watched it a few years ago, even still. And I yeah. think that yeah. it's pretty freaky the way that they, they do that with Kevin Bacon. And I mean, it's, it was so it, imagine. It's yeah. And Kevin would wear green. Like we would do the scene. Then he would, he'd wear a green thing. There's this, there's this one scene where, I'm uh, where he's got electrodes and I'm taking electrodes off of him and he's sitting there and I come around him and I'm because he had just gone out and it was invisible and he did some some interesting kind of shady things and I'm getting mm -hmm. off on it. I'm like, tell me what happened. Did you go out there? And, you, and he's we're both facing this way. So we shot. This just tells you the process of how to shoot it. And Paul Verhoeven, one of the legendary film directors, we shoot it. Right. So he's he's here and he's talking and he's got the green suit on. And then then we take a plate. So, which means we get a shot of what what's there without me and without him. Okay. So they can then then I come in and I, and and back then it was, hey Greg, do the same scene. Kevin's going to do his lines off camera and just pretend that Kevin's there. I did my scene and and this I don't I don't pride myself on this because you want to give a different take and a different interpretation every time. You know, give something interesting. I hit the same lines in the same place at the same time i looked at it wow they matched it up and and paul was like i don't even know if we need to like do anything to this we can just layer this and it works wow and i and it was weird because i was like oh that's you know man i'm like a i'm like a puppet just yeah. <laughs> that's like, interesting I, that you brought up that uh that part though like yeah the fact that <laughs> you're hitting the same spot though like that's like that's timing though man and i know you're you're a bit of a drummer so i mean yeah that's, i'm a uh, drummer so yep. that's i'm sure that that all goes hand in hand but i appreciate you uh walking me through a little bit of how that works i mean um especially at least back in the day how they did they got to get that framed up first right and just get that background that you were saying and yeah. then they get you know then they layer then they film you there and then they film kevin there right and yeah, then they put it and, and, and then they layer it all together. Is that is that? Yeah, because because he's wearing green. Yeah, they're able to put the background in where he is. Right. Except for the things, there were these diodes on his head, so the green disappears, but the diodes are still there. Yeah. And that way, he looks invisible. You so know, he's cool. invisible. It was nine months. I was working on um, uh, Felicity at the time. Mm -hmm. Felicity was kind of hitting. It was like, you know, interesting. It was, you know, on the WB, um, Dawson's Creek was doing well. We were like followed up Dawson's Creek. And, um, and because I was on a show, I mean, you know how it is. It's like when your band's cooking, you're doing something great. Everybody wants you, whatever. So suddenly it was like, I was up for this role. I, I went in, I auditioned, I was like, whatever. And I guess because I was on a show, they were like, no, he'd be interesting. And yeah. uh, Paul Verhoeven dyed my red, uh, he put highlights, red highlights in my hair. And here I am now with, Elizabeth Shue, you know, Lisa Shue. Um, uh, I mean, the cast is, is unbelievable in that movie. And, and uh, especially you know, for the time, like if I, I went back and looked at it and I was like, oh, like uh, there's a lot of uh, heavy hitters for that time, too. Like and it was Josh like, Brolin. Josh Brolin. I mean, I mean, oh, I forgot that. Yeah, he's the. Yeah, Josh Brolin. Um, there was a bunch of people in it. Obviously, Kevin Bacon, um, Joey Slotnick and I were in it together. But. To be able to, I was, I was a little, I was, I'm, I'm working on a little TV show for the WB and suddenly I'm doing this. So at the same time, I was shooting both of those and it was, um, it was so awesome to go yeah. from a great TV show to now this movie that took nine months. Elizabeth Shue uh, popped her Achilles one day during lunch. She's a gymnast and she was, she shouldn't have been doing it, but she right. you know did something during lunch, working out, popped her Achilles and we had to shut down, came back. Like it wow. just, it, it was the job that never ended. And you, like you're saying, the special effects on that movie are just awesome. The, when you see the body come back and the bones and the whole thing. Even and, the first time when it's the, with, with the gorilla, like, I'm like, oh, oh that's so cool. Like oh my God. all the muscles coming back and everything. I was like, that is, I remember even then I thought it was so cool. Then I was like watching it again. And I'm like, sure. The graphics have gotten, I mean, we're talking what, 20 years ago or yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. And like, 
the fact that it still holds up in this world of technology that the exponential growth that we've seen even in the last five years, let's say you're talking yeah. 20 years ago and it still holds up. I'm like, it had to have taken that much time to do something like that. I mean, like you guys filmed I have, for nine months. How much longer did it take to do all the CGI after that? Yeah, I have a great story. Um, oh, let's go. So, so there's all those animals you just mentioned, the orangutans and the apes and everything. One of the apes is, oh, there's a guy, there's a man in a suit. And okay. he, he's famous for doing it. And um, they're called Amalgamated. Um, uh, Alec Gillis is one of the guys. They're great practical effects uh, company. They do a ton of really famous stuff. Anyway, um, so uh, they had, but they had real animals. So we had these animals in cages and all of these animal trainers and stuff. And they had a bunch of monkeys. So we got to work with the monkeys, work with the orangutans, couldn't get too close to this or that. But I remember this one monkey. I was like, God, it's really, and it was, it was, um, what was the name of the monkey? Punky, I think. Punky the monkey. And, and, um, so cut to two weeks later, uh, from working with, you know, several days with these animals, I, I get invited to, uh, Neverland Ranch. Michael Jackson is having a party for his dad's oh. birthday. And one of the kids in the family loved Felicity. So they invited the whole cast. And this is when all the shit's going down with uh, Michael. And so half the people that were invited were like, I'm not going, I don't want to go. And I'm like, this is Michael Jackson. This is Neverland Ranch. I want to see this. You got to see, see it. You got to see yeah. what's going on. I mean, especially then and every allegations are allegations. And they, yeah, if it's true, it's fucking horrible. But I still love the music and I got to see this. By the way, yeah. <laughs> and I was at that time, I was like, lock him up in a recording studio. <laughs> There's I an still, idea. There's an idea. Dude, I love the music. I want to hear. Music. I'm a huge. I grew up on Michael Jackson's Thriller album, like in, uh. in, in in my my parents' living room. All the, you know, I I used to like many kids. I I emulated the moonwalk every chance I got. It made all the adults around pop. You know, it was yeah. like it was fucking. It was great. Totally. <laughs> but wait, do you remember when we were kids? And I'm older than you, but when we were kids, when like the Bee Gees. Michael Jackson, like you could not find a radio station that wasn't playing oh, yeah. their song at that. There was like a time when I remember I was going from one to the other, to the other, to the other. And it was just all Michael Jackson. Yeah. No matter, even if it was like, a, like K rock or, you know, it, they all couldn't Everything. get enough of him. Yeah. You know, crazy. Rightfully so. The yeah. Music was, the music's amazing. He's such a performer, everything oh. about it. Like I, of course, you hope you know, the d d transgressions weren't true, or you, and if they are, sorry for all the victims, of course, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But fuck, man, the music's just incredible, incredible. I, I have, a, a, there, there are certain people, and, um, you know, when I, I, I get a little, musicians and athletes, I'm a little like, <laughs> and then, then, I, then I become, uh, then we're buddies. You know, I yeah, just yeah. am so enamored. It's such a God-given God God gift. It's, that's such an interesting know. thing, though, because I'm like that with actors as well. Like, I feel, but I feel like it's, I'm like that with sports uh, athletes and a lot of other people, too. And I've gotten better at it since I have a show now, then I kind of yeah. have to. But, like, it's, I feel like it's that, um, there's that mutual respect for being in a different form of entertainment because athletes, actors, comedians, we're all musicians. We're all entertainment. We all fall yeah. under the umbrella. But you're, but you have this admiration for that other talent like so much. And like, oh, yeah. and it's usually I've I've found that it can be reciprocated that way, like you just described. But it's so funny because for me, I'm like, no, 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 you, no, 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 you. I you know. know. Well, I have to tell you, when <laughs> someone like you tells me, my whole family and my brother-in-law, we used to, we call it. I hear this from athletes that are like, oh, we, we would fly from one or drive from one city to another, fly, whatever. I mean, professional athletes that tell me that it, it, it got them through or soldiers too. Oh my God. We were stationed and, and I watched heroes from, from the beginning to the end. It means the world to me. It's like, I don't know who who's watching this stuff when I'm doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I've been really, really fortunate. Um, but I've gotten to, to you know, meet some of these great, great people. And uh, Prince was another one that I uh, got to meet. Oh, and, shit, you met Prince? Dude, I have the craziest Prince story ever but so so i go let's to finish this other story i'll remember the prince i'll remember, remember that we gotta come back to prince let's finish the michael um, jackson story prince had <laughs> epilepsy remember that i did not so know that yeah prince I, I, had epilepsy my oldest realize. son has epilepsy so, yes yeah. yeah um so anyway uh 
we're at Neverland Ranch. My wife and I were walking around. We're like, oh, my God, this is crazy. And, of course, me, with my sense of humor, I'm riding the train. You know, they have a, he had a train and he had animals and stuff. I mean, literally wow. a giraffe and whatever. And I'm like, oh, is he diddling kids in that bush over there? Like, I'm making jokes, right? And walking around. Yeah, yeah. Never see a sign of any of the Jacksons. Saw Joe, saw the dad, went up to him and said, you don't know who I am, but I'm. thank you for being having me here. Happy birthday. And he's like, oh, yeah, my grandkids like your show, whatever. And then um later found out that michael was there but he was dressed up in, in old man prosthetics walking around listening to what people said about him wow so he, so heard, he, you, heard, he heard you saying oh i bet you he's diddling that kid over there i don't know there were hundreds of people there it was like a big <laughs> so thing you're just like but, hoping <laughs> yeah, exactly. it was crazy but uh, we're walking around and i see this crowd and i thought oh did somebody fall somebody and i look and it's a monkey and there's a trainer next to the monkey, and um, Jennifer Love Hewitt is sitting there. Oh my! my playing my with my crush, my crush. Oh my god! One of my <laughs> closest friends right now, by the oh, way. Oh wow! And this is when awesome. this is when it started. Was I walked up and I was like, "Hunky?" I recognize you recognize the monkey from Hollow Man. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Did he recognize you? That would be that would be great if it was like <laughs> Greg. <laughs> I and 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 love to this day says to me, um, I can't, you came up and you didn't say, <laughs> Hi, I'm I'm Greg. Jennifer Love Hewitt, right? Like you yeah. recognized the monkey before you recognized me. <laughs> um, but that and then the trainer said to me, he's like, dude, he doesn't keep you know, he keeps one tenth of the animals here. He brings them in when he wants to see them, he brings them in for parties and whatever. So you know, he, he cares about the animals even more than humans. Like he really, you know, so that was a good thing. But I, I thought that was so funny that I recognized this monkey. That's so rad. That's a couple so of weeks rad. earlier. Yeah. <laughs> what a small world to run into a monkey, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> How I know you, 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 did a, you described being on the train and stuff. Um, and that's an amazing story to recognize the monkey. But what were some of the other impressions you got? I'm just very curious about Neverland Ranch, obviously never having been there. Um, yeah. I mean, I thought it was a, so, so there were a bunch of German tourists that were bussed in for this party too, which I thought was odd. I never got an explanation for that. Never understood why. Wow. Um, the, uh, they, they served. How many people were at this party? There were like hundreds of people walking around and he has a, he has a, or he had a, um, like an amusement park. So there was one of those things where you get a, you get a blanket and you go down that slide. You oh, know, yeah, thing. yeah, 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 yeah. And there were teacups and there were, it was like his little mini Disneyland, you know, obviously Neverland. Right. But um, on the train, when you took the train around, there was a candy shop. There was a candy and, and there was like a family that ran that candy shop. So I remember we stopped and we went in and I was like, oh my gosh, this is, a, I mean, it's a real candy store. And they said, oh, it's all free. Like whatever you want, you know, just tell us. And I'm like, oh, you guys relate? Yeah, that's my husband. That's my son. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. He's got a family living here. Um, wow. Went into the theater big theater you know building and went into the theater and it was weird to see this glass mirrored glass thing that when if you went up you could look in and see that there's a bed right there i mean we've all seen the pictures now but i was right. like standing there looking in thought that was odd um he had an arcade another a building that was close to the theater building that was like an arcade and i remember seeing um you know just like seeing kids and it was there's so many people there i looked in the house i did look in the house i have to say um and beautiful house but like you think there's like mansion no it was just beautiful grounds and the house was like um like a really nice huge ranch style house kind of thing okay um looked in and it was locked looked in and i did see tito and like family members they were inside no i didn't see michael like i said but i looked around and they I'm looking in. I was like, you know what? And my wife, Elizabeth, she was like, stop. You can't just look in someone's. I'm like, what do they want us to do? I mean, yeah. I'm here. And they and brought they, they brought German uh, tourists over tourists. here for a reason. <laughs> right. But I look around and there's a statue of Michael. There's several paintings of Michael sitting on th like one in particular. He looked like a king. He's sitting on a throne. Um, and then uh, with um, his son and uh, I don't know if it was son and daughter, but there was it was just paintings. It was like it, that was just weird and a lot of collectible stuff that I didn't know what it was. You know, it's like mm. ancient this and and ornate this and that, you know, where you just right. what, stuff you've heard about, you know, when you watch a documentary, you're like, oh, he went shopping and bought all that stuff. 
that was the kind of vibe that you it was way too much stuff for a house like that one of the things he has this be- beautiful um water feature like that a hotel would have with fountain you know and it was gorgeous and then um one of the coolest things was he had an in-ground trampoline so big uh, grass area and the trampoline was at grass level right yeah so I've, I've seen those now. They're probably was was pretty rare then. Like I've seen those now. Like my neighbor actually has one. It was probably yeah, not as big. We have yeah. one. Yeah, 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 we yeah, have yeah, one. yeah, yeah. We got home and I looked in them, and then we were just doing our sprinklers, and we don't have anything like what he had property wise. <laughs> yeah, but they were digging already, and I said, "What would it take to dig up this? You know, dig and put this in?" He's like, "Oh, I just did that over, you know, in." I live out in the West Valley and he's like over there. I could do it for you. No problem. And so, you know, it, uh, it wasn't crazy. And he, he did, they do like a, they make like a wine barrel kind of with the wood inside oh, okay. and it just sits right in. And it was one of the best things we ever did. Cause the kids can't get, can't get hurt. You know, they're right, not going to no, fall genius. off. The yeah. Not, not, a, not as bad. They, they could probably still find a way to get hurt. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. And now we took the, um, they're they're my kids are older now they're baseball players in college and stuff and we took the trampoline out and now it's a fire pit so you walk down into it oh that's have, brilliant yeah we have all this so it's like a sunken fire pit in the backyard it's great that sounds awesome i'll i'll, I'll check it out next time you uh, have me over at the house dude you're invited <laughs> any time i any appreciate it. likewise likewise I, we're not that far from each other you mentioned you're in the west valley over there i mean on a, on a bad traffic day, we're far from each other, but I'm just down here in Orange County. So it's, it's, yeah, you know, 40, absolutely. 40 My miles. son actually was supposed to play at Chapman. Oh, really? Right by you. Yeah. And then he, little- uh, this other opportunity came about. So he just decommitted and he's now going to, um, he's playing uh, at another school. Uh, but he's, uh, but dude, I, I, I spend so much time in Orange County. I can't even tell you baseball. That is a baseball mecca down there. It absolutely is. That, it's funny because I grew up and I never realized it until about my sophomore year in high school because then all my friends that I had played football, peewee football with were getting very serious about baseball. And our most of our football teams aren't that great. Like, there's a couple that are pretty good, but like everyone goes into baseball around here. And then I started, and now that I have a five-year-old son, we talk to all the other adults and they're like, all about uh, is he in t-ball yet is he doing yeah. doing this yet and i'm like i don't know man i'm just like whatever he yeah. picks to do he's gonna do but then i realized like how insane it is around here i'm like they oh. really care about it. and it's just a random thing for orange county i'm like surfing skateboarding totally understand that why baseball so big here i have no idea yeah well you know you have that park that's like central park now central they park built- yeah we've had what's that, it yeah. called it is it's called central park in, in huntington oh Beach. it is yeah no, because well, but right Which off one? the freeway, there's another park area that's got a stadium and several fields, and then it's got football fields and soccer fields. I mean, it's unbelievable. One of the biggest, most impressive things I've ever seen. And then they have a lot of uh, new, um, you know, uh, complex uh, like condos and, and and townhouses and stuff around it. Um, it's it's incredible. It's mm. right. It's right off the freeway, and, and it's uh, right off the five. Um, oh, right off the five. So it's that's not. Uh, yeah, there's a. I don't know that one. We'll have to we'll have to reconvene. Oh, you won't believe when I yeah. when I send you what it is. I forgot what it's called. Uh, some um, anyway, I'll send it to you. Okay, it's incredible. That is that's just the essence of what they're doing down there. I mean, look, uh, California is all about year round baseball, year round football, year round basketball. You know, these kids don't get a break now, and they they take it way too seriously, way too young. Yeah, it's, that's 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 the unfortunate part about it for me. Like, I love sports. I'm a huge yeah. I am not good at it. I was never an athlete growing up. I played a little bit here and there, but never an athlete. Yeah. I love my son playing. He's in soccer. He's in football. Um, great. I'm happy for him to do whatever, but I'm like one of the, I'm just waiting for the wrong coach or the wrong parent to take it too seriously. And I'm just going to walk. It's going to happen. I'm just going to be like, yeah. nope, we're not doing this. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, they do. They yeah. do. That's that's unfortunate. I mean, you, so you got you got three kids now, right? Is that is that what yeah. I read? Yeah, okay. three grown men. Um, three grown, all Jake's, boys, all boys, huh? Yeah, Jake's twenty six. Uh, ben is twenty two, and uh, Sam's eighteen. And it's um, yeah, you know, they adult they all kind of find their thing, like you're saying, like whatever they, you know, Jake was Jake was a really good athlete before he he started having seizures when he was seven, mm-hmm. and then it took a while to get his seizures under control, and during that time, it's it's tough that, you know, hand-eye coordination kind of goes with the medication that he's on to stop seize, you know, stop his seizures. And, 
um, you know, that's where we got on this whole uh, roller coaster of, of being caregivers for him. And, right. and, uh, and, you know, he's doing well. I mean, epilepsy, you know, most of people that have epilepsy, you, you don't know they have a seizure condition. You just don't see it until you see them have a seizure. So that's why I started talkaboutit.org to encourage people to talk about this because if you and I are in an office together or band together or on a show together, whatever. And if I'm like, Johnny, just so you know, if, if I start having a, if I start doing this and I'm starting to have a seizure, just don't let me fall. Cause if I hit yeah. my head, that's what damages. And if I have a seizure, just put me on my side and let, and, and the seizure, put something under my head to make it soft. So I don't hit my head mm. and I'll be okay. And if you know that, Oh my God, it takes, takes the fear and the stigma and the scariness out of it. So that's what we're doing with the website and um and the podcast PS- what's that and the podcast the talk about a podcast i wanted to, yes i wanted yeah. to get into that because i did listen to a few episodes oh and, awesome uh, i have a a, a a personal story to share with you as well on this uh not directly from me but um my wife's friend uh you know one of her closest friends from high school maybe even middle school now that i think about it um Lives right around the corner from us by happenstance. We ended up in the same neighborhood as adults together, have kids together. Their firstborn, um, Savannah, is actually has a, a rare disease that uh, causes epilepsy. So oh. I, I was I I had her send it to me because I didn't want to I didn't want to mess it up because I always say it wrong. It's one. Is it's it called Dravet syndrome? No, it starts with a P. I have it right here somewhere because I oh. asked her earlier. It's PAC, uh, I think it's P-A-C-H-Y-G-Y-R-I-A. And uh, so part, it's super rare and it causes uh, 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 infantile spasms as a yeah. seizure type. Yeah. Um, and I, I bring all this up because, so basically the disease causes, uh, she has smooth parts on her brain where they're supposed to be bumpy. And then that, oh. and then that causes this, yeah, and it's, it's a super rare disease. She's always going to need her parents or a caregiver of some kind. Um, mm-hmm. The cool thing that they're just now, uh, one of those, one of those uh, things you could celebrate, little battles you can celebrate as you, as you talk about on the podcast, is yeah. um, with technology right now, that they, they're finding that she might be able to communicate using her eyes on a, on a digital screen at some point. Oh, which wow. Which be huge because right now she's, she's a, about a year younger than my son. My son's five and a half. So then she's about four and a half um, and she can't communicate really. You know, it's, she can't walk, she can't crawl, she can't do, I mean, it's, oh, it's, it's, really? pretty, wow. it's pretty severe yeah. because of yeah. the condition causing the epilepsy too. She cannot uh, develop properly because it's at such a, a young age too. Yeah. So, so you're, like, you're hitting it, you're hitting it right on the, in the head. Like I get, and no pun intended, I get um, mm-hmm. uh, calls all the time from people that say, you know, I'm the red phone because people know. My son has epilepsy. I'm the national net right. spokesperson when I when I have time, and um, and I start to talk about it and all that. And so I tell people it's going to be okay. I don't know what version of okay it's going to be for you, but you're going to get through this because it's really really dark. I mean, you know, as a parent, all you want to do is you want your your kids to be okay, and it's when the they're only not thing okay, that matters right? Yeah, and when they're not okay, you want a doctor to tell you, okay, here's it, here's the issue, here's what we're going to do. Epilepsy is not like that. It's like we don't know why. I mean, some cases it's okay. You played football, you hit your head, you, you, you got in a car accident, whatever, or you have cancer, God forbid, or your tumor. Jake was, uh, my son, um, perfectly normal. And the first seven years are when brain, your brain develops after seven years, you have a better chance of having someone have a, a normal, you know, quote unquote, normal quality of life. Right. So those first few years are really important. And infantile spasms are scary. You're, yeah. you're, you're holding your infant and they're shaking and they're, and they're having a little bit of a seizure. Some of times, sometimes they'll have a, a, a tonoclonic seizure, like what we used to call grand mal seizure and it'll keep going, but it's terrifying in the short term. And it's terrifying in the long term because your brain is trying to develop. And um, the good news for, uh, for Savannah is she's young and they, it is so where the brain is incredibly resilient. Mm-hmm. And there are ways like, like you're talking about using the eyes to speak, but trust me, there might be, and it probably will be since she's so young, so many advancements happening very quickly. And yeah, we try and they're hoping for. Absolutely. I mean, any, yeah, any, we try like you said, any them. little, any little victory um, is a huge one. You know, like they, they struggle, they, they have a, they have a, a another boy now um, who's, coming up on a year now old. So, um, and he's, he seems to be, 
completely healthy, doesn't have the same pachygeria or whatever, however you pronounce it. Yeah, um, I've never heard of it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's super rare. That's why um, I wanted to talk to you about the podcast because you did the one with uh, Cody Brundage, uh, the, yeah. the MMA fighter, and you yeah. described a, a super rare one as well that that had epilepsy as a part of 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 his daughter's. Uh, yeah, uh, the path. good news. The good news right now is that rare diseases are getting a lot of attention. They're getting a lot of money. And the research is really uh, moving very quickly with rare diseases, not as much as it should, especially when there's not as many people affected by mm -hmm. these things. But there are similarities. There are, you know, th the technology is bringing the whole uh, neurological world, research world, um, uh, you know, neuroscientist world together much quicker than it used to in the back, back in the day. So one development over here is going to help her condition. And, mm -hmm. um, you hear about things, you know, Jake's on like five meds and, and he's, uh, he's doing really well. Um, but, but I don't like the fact, and he doesn't like the fact that he has to take all these meds. Right. Um, but like, he's got, you know, and finding today, that right hot. and finding that right. Uh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but finding that right combination of those meds too, I'm sure took a long time as well. I know that they, it, it does and that and, struggle. And, and getting a it lot right. of times your, your brain will find a way around it. So you'll take one medication, 75% mm -hmm. of the people respond to one medication. That's all they have to take. And then they're fine. Or, you know, they, they can, they have to stay on top of it. Your body changes, your diet changes, your weight changes. You have to like adjust the medication. Jake is the is one of those. It's uh, it's called difficult to treat um, uh, epilepsy. So we have a combination of meds and therapies and stuff. And he's, I mean, he he's doing great. I mean, he's a second degree Taekwondo. He teaches wow. Taekwondo. He's got a great job. He doesn't drive because he does. He just doesn't want to. God forbid he gets in an accident. But he's amazing. I mean, he's played me a couple of times in movies. A young version of me. He's like he's. Uh, oh wow! What what roles? Are, what what. What uh, I'm, I want to check those out now. If I have it, I might have seen yeah. them and, and missed that part of it. But yeah, that's... no, no, no. Well, well um, Max Reload and the Nether Blasters. There's a flashback okay. to when I was just coming up and, and I created like an Atari type game motor and I and, and and the business got to my head. I bought a DeLorean. I had girls around me, so he's playing that role. That's rad. That's so gonna be funny. cool. As, that's gonna be cool as a father though to see that and be a part oh. of that. That's that's the dream right there, man. Yeah, that's that's it cool, was. Man. It was awesome. And then one of the most incredible things was um, 911 Lone Star is a show. Mm. And I just played a role. Um, and I played a role. It was it was based on a true story. A guy whose son um, had seizures so bad he fell into a seizure, didn't come out of it. And they were they were like, look, we have to wean him off. He's in he's in the ER um, or in the ICU. And they said, we, we've got to wean him off. It's called a terminal wean. We're going to start taking these machines off. There's nothing else we can do. And, and the guy pulled a gun out and held everybody hostage in the ICU and wow. said, I know my son, he's coming out of this. He's done this before. When he was three, he almost drowned in the pool. We thought we lost him. He came, my son is a miracle. And he's like, he, and I, so I play that guy. It was very emotional, but the most emotional part was, um, they were so great on that show. The producer says to me, you know, uh, I didn't want to ask, but do you think maybe your son would want to play your son? in the bed and i was like what and he wow. said yeah i mean we've got a guy we hired but i don't mind paying that guy and having your son so jake actually was in the bed when i'm sitting there emotion crying telling him please survive i love you so much i mean it was that's, unbelievable oh my god that's seriously i haven't even seen it just you describing it right now it's getting me a little choked up like that's yeah. got to be i mean i can only imagine what you were doing i mean that's it was pulling from yeah, everything. It was, it was, man, that's that's incredible. It, it was crazy uh, and and great at the same time. Um, you know, uh, the co-stars, the stars of the show. I was a guest star. They couldn't have been better. The director, she was incredible. But it was so people were like, how did you even get through it? How do you? And I was like, it was easier because I didn't have to draw from anything. Here's my son, who's yeah. supposed to have suffered from a seizure. He had the thing on and the the thing the breathing thing down his i mean he jake did a great job and then he, he wakes up he actually come at the end of the episode he comes out of it i was wow. right and um my character was right and so it was just it was, it was so in beautiful the true story so that great. that was based on is that do you know if that was how it, how it ended in the true story yeah it, based it actually on? ended and then the two the father son to have a business together they're, they're running a business together Whoa. the dad the dad did 
had to do time. He did like two weeks in, in jail for what he did because you can't pull I, a gun. Well, yeah, you know, but uh, that, I, I, you do that on, on your head if it, if it meant you saved your son fucking age. Exactly. <laughs> I do, do it all over again, officer. Let's do it again. <laughs> right, whatever it takes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that was, that's emotional. That was, I mean, for you too, yeah. to like be able to pull from that and have your son in the scene and everything. Wow, that's, that's, that's incredible. And then also... For, Coming full circle, you know, I, I'm doing this show now called The Caregiver Series. If people oh, can go to the care, the com and takes you right to uh, YouTube and you can watch these episodes. And there's seven minute episodes where I'm, I'm shining a light on caregivers. It's really important. Like, you know, when you're on a plane and they say, put a mask on yourself before you put a mask on your child. Right. You really need that metaphor is important. Like as a caregiver, you got to take care of yourself. I gain weight. I'm up in weight right now. I'm trying to lose weight. It's like, we've got to be healthy for our kids, for our family, you know, to take care of others. You got to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. And that show, a lot of people put off as caregivers, they put off the things that they, that they, they enjoy, that keep them centered, keep them normal. Whether it even is just going out to dinner with your husband, wife, spouse, whatever. It's, you need to have normalcy in your life and you need to know that everything's going to be okay. And you need to be able to take an attaboy. Somebody needs to pat you on the back and go, mm. attaboy, great job. You're doing a great job. It's okay. Great As caregivers, last person we want in the world to, to praise is ourselves. It's like what When someone says to my wife and, and myself, how do you guys do it? You're incredible. You're the best parents in the world. It's like, what? I know they mean well, but I hate hearing that. I'm not. What am I supposed to do? Like, yeah. this is my son. Yeah, Take care I mean, of my that's, son. I mean, I don't have that that same. I can't. I can't uh, emp- uh, sympathize with that. I can only empathize, right? And it's like, uh, it, but I can understand it, you know, because when you first have a kid, I've only got the one, and he's pretty young still. But it, you, you're not prepared for that in any facet, no. even if they're completely healthy. You just do like everything just becomes, I don't know. I just do it because I have to like, yeah. that's <laughs> so, absolutely so, right. I mean, and I could, so that's why I'm saying I can, I can understand where you're coming from on that, but I, I can't, I can't understand how that, how that is. And to, to your point, taking those attaboys, I mean, I'm sure it's difficult, but I mean, to your point, it's, you got to be able to do that. Right. Yeah. And also have a day to just take a breath. Like there was this woman, Leslie, she loved art. She gave up painting. So I took her to a gallery and we painted to this art studio. And we had, we did what's called art therapy. I'd never done it before. Mm. And it was just paint what you're feeling today, whatever. It didn't, we didn't go deep, but it was like, we were painting and talking about our kids and how much we love them. And I'm learning from her. She's learning from me. It was a great episode. Gloria in Houston. Oh my gosh. Like the most beautiful family and we're talking and i took her she she, she's like i love uh horticulture i love gardens and stuff i took her to this beautiful garden had she always she loves the british monarchy what a day we're we're oh wow yeah we're recording this on the day that queen elizabeth just passed i just i just got that news before we were uh before we were starting this whole thing up yeah gloria loves the idea of high tea and like that whole that whole tradition Mm -hmm. so in the middle of this beautiful park on this little island in the middle of this water, I had the tea set up and the two of us had tea and, and all the little tea cakes and the sandwiches and, and literally had the greatest conversation. And then I took her back and I made dinner for her family. And, it, and John, I took, I told you, took her to this really cool car place that's actually between me and you mm-hmm. off the 405. And, and we just went into this Mecca man cave and talked about cars and our kids. And it's just such a great show. I can't even tell you. I'm partnered with Jazz Pharmaceuticals. They're making it happen. And without their help, there's no way this would happen. And um, episodes are coming out all the time. And and it's uh, I'm so proud of it. I can't even begin to tell you. Um, I'm, I'm and my a, Bronco is featured. My Ford Bronco is featured. Isn't that nice, it. nice. I'm, yeah. I'm glad. I mean, it's so cool that you're using your talent and your platform to uh, help others who are going through this. You know, I, I that's that was a thing that I took away from uh you're even the the talk about it podcast and now now that i hear about this caregiver thing i'm definitely going to check it out and and uh tell a couple of my friends who need to check it out to to do so and i just sent you the link awesome perfect thank you i will it'll also be down here in the description for everybody we're gonna make sure we put that out there because i do i'm not just blowing smoke man like i do really appreciate what you're doing because even for me with with a friend that's going through it um when i was listening i sent them that episode specifically with uh with cody and I was just like, 
as a layman for me, not living it or anything like that, it was very informative one. And two, it gave a lot of hope. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like you guys are, you're sharing your personal stories of what you're going through as the caregivers or even a couple of the other guests you've had who, who have epilepsy and are yeah. living their lives with it. But you're, you're continually uh, reassuring that hope. And I think that that is such a cool thing and, you guys are doing. And, and you just hit on something. The most important thing is removing that isolation. You're not alone. I know right. this is a rare condition that you're telling me your friend has, mm -hmm. your friend's uh, daughter has, but there are other people going through very similar things. Don't be right. afraid. Don't, when, when we started going through this, we were told, you know, get into a therapy group and all you want to do is find a mirror. Like I want to, I want to talk to somebody who's going through exactly what I'm going through. Right. Guess what? That ain't not going to happen. I don't not think that happens with anything in life, by the way, because everyone has right. their own perception. We have our own lens, people. It's, it, your perception and your thoughts are as unique as your thumbprint. Let's put it that way. But even in this conversation, I'm yeah. learning from you. You're learning from me. Right. I'm taking little things from you. You're taking things from me. We're now friends. I'm definitely yeah. going to see you. You're Absolutely. dragging you to the valley, no matter how much you don't want to come here. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to get a driver because I hate that fucking traffic. <laughs> No I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> okay. But, but like, um, and by the way, that is true. I do not let go of people. Like yeah. when I meet somebody with a good heart, like you, I just, that's it. I won't pester you, but you got a friend for life, man. And I, I likewise, I appreciate it. Yeah. My studio in North Hollywood, I built this, um, this just, I, I getting back to the show business side of things. I, I'm, I do things. I do them. I don't talk about them. We all talk about, I have a million ideas. I don't get to all of them, but I really try and make things happen. And a long time ago, I realized I just don't want anybody to, I don't have to wait on anybody to tell me, oh yeah, you have an idea, let's shoot it. Mm -hmm. Or you have a this or that. So we built, I have this you know, building. I was fortunate enough to be able to buy this building and my band, band from TV and, and, and the action figures, which you know we've had for years. Now the action figures is, is a band where you can't be on stage unless you have an action figure. So everybody on stage <laughs> is like, uh, you know, from Wait, some an action, famous. But, but you could get, you could get like a friend, like uh, the producer of this show, Sam Hawkins actually makes toys. Okay. Well, you, you, you have like a star Wars. That's like, <laughs> that's, you, you must just like put that in everybody else's face. Cause having a star Wars action figure, nonetheless, you know, like that's, yes. It's like, oh, you got an action figure. That's cute. Mine's from Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, I got to cling to. And I will be clinging to this. My character died, but I'm yeah. never letting this thing go. You know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. That um, must have been so. Yeah. Go on, though. We, let's, get so in, cool. let's get into this band, too, by the way. But go on with your yeah. story there. Yeah. Yeah. We got to talk. So, um, but but I we needed a place to rehearse. So I, let's get into the band. So, so years and years ago, I was on Felicity, and I got asked... Um, uh, Phil Lesh and and a few other people were playing at the House of Blues for some charity event, and um, they were like, "Hey, do you guys want to play?" Somebody heard that I played the drums, and and they said, "Do you want to come on and and do a song? Maybe you and a couple other cast members." And so I went with Rob Benedict, who is on Supernatural now. He's got his own band um, uh, called Loud and Swain. They're really good. Anyway, he and I and Mandy uh, Amanda Foreman, we went and we did uh, Cheap Trick Surrender. And we when you're doing one song. I mean, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you guys do it. But but um, when you're doing one song, you rehearse that one song over and over. And it's like fine, okay. And I don't play to a click track. I'm a drummer, but I just I I just go by feeling, and that's my favorite drummers have the combination Absolutely. of both. And they internal metronome. It. You have an internal metronome, yeah. I have an internal like metronome. My yeah. my wife is constantly telling me stop tapping. Yeah. Stop oh, breathing. you're a drummer. That's that, that, you cannot. That's like asking someone else not to breathe. That's not going to happen. Exactly. <laughs> but there are. But by the way, there are drummers. Um. You know. By the way, Gracie Mintz. Who? Thank you, Gracie. Thank you, Gracie, for, for getting this together. This is already amazing. And thank you for uh, putting this. Your uh, Gracie's together. amazing. Gracie's dad and mom are even more amazing. And her dad is a very accomplished drummer, really solid. Ah, I, I didn't even guys, know this yet. Really, really I'm new to the Gracie Mintz family, by the way. We just uh, started uh, working with Velvet Hammer, where she's where she's at, and uh, oh yeah, that's so. I'm new to new to Gracie and stuff. Uh, fairly, she's new. yeah. We've known we're family friends. We've known each other forever, and uh, yeah, that's what she's um, Ricky and I worked together for years. He's he's a, a very talented guy, but um, he's got a band and whatever. But when I see other drummers. Um, and you could tell me this when you when you play with other drum certain drummers are mechanical. Yeah. Ricky's got heart to 
but there are drummers that I see and they just, they play what they're supposed to play. I'm like, when I, and Soundcheck is a good example of it. I, I need in-ears. We have in-ears. I've never mm-hmm. done them. I've never used them and I need to use them. That's the yeah, dumbest thing a drummer can do. Yeah. But, but I have my wedges, my speakers that I'm listening to, right? And I, the general mix I need is so loud. I need to hear the vocal. I need to hear the lead guitar, rhythm guitar, bass for, for sure. Mm. But I need it because I'm playing off of, we're playing all covers, by the way. So I'm playing off of what I know the song is supposed to be and rehearsed. We've rehearsed ad nauseum. But um, it's it, it, when, when, it, when a singer comes in, when an actor comes in and they mix it up a little bit, it does he like off? they'll sing it in a way that's a little off, a little different. I'm like, the fuck are you doing? Where are we? <laughs> no, so you're not a, you're, you might be an improv uh, comedian or actor, but uh, definitely not an improv drummer, huh? No, I mean, I am. <laughs> I, I, I go, but you know, the, 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 they talk about it being the heartbeat of a band. Like, mm-hmm. I love that groove. Right. Trust me, nowhere near what you do, but it's still the same that you're on stage and you're all doing something. You don't get a take two right. when you're playing live. And I, I just love it. I love that jumping out of a plane together and going, okay, as long as we're holding on to each other, we're right. going to land safely. Let's all do this together. And it's just, man, it's the best feeling. So I've got this building and we set it up. So it's a rehearsal space. And I was like, let's go all out. So we built, it's a live recording studio. Corey, uh, uh, Corey did, Corey Taylor did a, uh, he did his music video there. I played the fake drummer in the band and they had all these people in it, but we shot it there. We shoot a lot of stuff there. A lot of bands come through there. Which music video Um, was it? Do you remember? Was it for, um, was it for his solo project a couple years ago or? Yeah. Okay. Was it the, Uh, uh, what was the the name of a girl, the name of a a girl at the song. Mm. It's really good. It's a great song. Um, he's going to kill me, Corey. I, I'm so <laughs> sorry. He's going to destroy yeah, exactly. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, uh, the, but, the, the comments down below will, will, will correct us off. Yeah, someone's going to know right now. If you look up Greg Grunder, you know, and, and his music video or whatever, there's a, there's a band playing and the, his band, he and his band, they're all the crew members. They're, they're the camera guys, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And the director is like, God, you guys are terrible. This is not going to work. And then these guys go up and they finish the song. And it's really a good song. It's great. But um, it was so much fun to have him there. And we've done, uh, you know, charity events there, live concerts there, whatever. All, all I'm saying is like, I, I, first of all, I can't wait for you to see it. But I it's will. it's so much fun to be able to just, you want to do it? Turn the lights on. Let's go. Whether it's a rehearsal and not, not even just a jam, a band jam, um, and we've had so many actors come through. We have a core band: Scott Grimes, Jesse Spencer, Adrian Pazdar, Bob Guinea. Um, uh, who am I missing? Um, amazing people: Brad, Brad Savage, uh, Chris, uh, uh, Nick Marzok. By the way, if you don't know the musician, he's our musical director. He's a musician, mm. singer, songwriter. Nick. Marzok, M A R Z O C K. Super familiar. I don't think I've. Holy, he plays Manhattan Beach. He plays down near you. Uh, sometimes sounds so familiar. But oh my yeah. god, he's got a yeah, he's got a new album called Disengage. Just incredible. But that out. um, he and I do a lot together. We do podcasts and stuff together. But it's just been a blast. And and um, it, it, and then we the building is such that we shoot stuff there too. So we'll shoot stuff there. I have a, a there's an artist friend of mine, Rob Pryor, who paints he's he's on stage with like rap guys and bands and stuff wow. um and he he paints with two he can you do all this at, the, at this building studio that you've built it's so cool it's wow. so cool that's yeah. that's awesome that's a, that's a great headquarters right there man like, and yeah that, and it's called the woodshed the building's called, the woodshed. called the woodshed. awesome yeah. no i can't yeah. wait to check that out i gotta i gotta get down there and absolutely check it out we, we just did a little bit of our warehouse and headquarters here in huntington pretty recently but um, oh cool yeah not, nothing you like you're ever, describing right now like we haven't gotten into that part of it yet but but you don't need to you have it it's yours yeah if you ever want to do a live concert oh, or a yours, special yeah, event you. please you'll love it i'm going to send you uh, send it over man know. i would love that yeah and i'm sure there's something we could do there for sure that'd be amazing yeah you'll love it awesome man so speaking of music in the podcast i know that um uh, JJ Abrams is not only a, a childhood friend of yours, uh, from what I, from what I've heard and, and read, um, he also did the music for, uh, talk about it. Right. Um, 
Yes, which Look is at you which doing is your really, research. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, you know, I like to keep these conversations very free form, but I also yeah. want to. I don't want you to bring something up and me be like, "Oh, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about." I want to know right. a little exactly. bit about it. <laughs> Just so I, you know, yeah. so I, I did, and I, and I did see that he's doing the music on it and stuff. And obviously, you've worked with him over the years. But how? I, this is the part that I was a little unclear on. How? long have you known him was it kindergarten or something i read yeah one place in each kinder- other oh wow yeah since like we were four we met when oh, we were shit. four or five the, son, the age your son is meeting his next jj abrams right now <laughs> i i hope i hope so that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> exactly um i say this a lot though it's, it's like it's great that you know my best friend is one of the most prolific the most talented producer writer directors in the world but more than anything else, way more than that, he's the best person that I have in my life. And he's he's just a great friend. He's been there through everything in my life. Good. He's, he's been responsible for a lot of good things in my life. But more than anything, he's just a you, you need a you need a friend like that, man. You yeah. need someone that you can, and I talk about this in the caregiver. You need someone that you can outside of your spouse or your family or whatever that's completely objective. Like Jake had brain surgery um once and and uh it was such a dark place. I was there and I was like, you know, you don't know what you, your son's in surgery, brain surgery. And I called JJ or he called me and he's like, how's it going? I said, he's in there right now or whatever. And I'm just bawling. I start crying, oh, whatever. Sorry. And he's like, okay, you done? Hmm. You done? Okay. That's it. Let's go. You got to be that guy. You got to be your, that for your friend. You need someone to just go. And he's always just, he's always there for me. That's I'm awesome. always there for him. We've been, it's just, it's, he's, he's, you know, he's the closest to a brother that I have, except for my brother, you know, it's just, it's, uh, I'm really lucky to have him in my life. And, and then all the other stuff is ridiculous. Like when we're in London uh, and, and he's written and producing and directing Star Wars and I'm in Star Wars because he gave me a role in it. Wow. And we're like, what the, like, we literally look at each other and we go, what the fuck is that's, going on? See, right that's now? the cool, that's the coolest thing ever that, you just touched upon is uh, I don't know if you know how much about uh, about my band, but we've all known each other since uh, pretty much grade school as well. And oh, just, I didn't know that. Yeah, we we've all grown up. Uh, we weren't always as close as you're describing, but we've all known each other here in Huntington Beach since we were in grade school and grew up together, knowing each other, then formed the band together. Blah blah blah. That that shit just doesn't happen in our in our line of work very often. Yeah. So I I love that you're just touching upon that like you're having an aha moment with someone that like me or other people watching or listening to this going right now, it's fucking JJ Abrams and fucking Greg Gunberg talking about how awesome it is that they grew up together and are doing this together. Like it's not just the accomplishment at its face value of, okay, that's fucking awesome. It's star Wars. Yeah. You know, it's the yeah. fact that you guys were have known each other since their kindergarten and have that story that pathway to together, that shit doesn't happen. That's even more. Okay, but rare. let's, let me talk. I'm going to throw this right back at you, dude. Where, give me an example. And I'm sure it's happened over and over again, where you guys, since you've known each other this long, you've always, at the beginning, you're always dreaming about playing a, a just a coliseum, a, you know, a huge venue. Right. And you're, but more than that, more than the number of people you played for and all that, I mean, that, that's got to be, I can't even imagine. We've been fortunate enough to, to play some big places, but not like you. So when you're playing, when you're, when you're back in the, in the green tent, you know, the area, whatever, and you're at a festival, tell me who you couldn't believe you were playing with on the same bill that you grew up listening to. Yeah, that's easy. It was uh, Metallica the first time they took oh, us out on tour. God. Back in 2006, uh, our first show with them, uh, where I think we played a show with them before, but they, they came in and out. But the first time that they actually introduced themselves and we and Lars came into the dressing room and asked us, hey, man, you know, we got this thing. We're going to be doing a, a commando by by this band. and We're going to be up there on stage. And we'd like you guys to come in and do some of the gang vocals tonight with us. And we're like, yeah, sure, we can do that. You know, <laughs> I'm in I'm 2006. Real. I'm all of, you know, I'm, I'm two years, three years removed from high school. And I'm, and I'm out in Germany about to be on this, share the stage. Not only play before them, but then go and share the stage with me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm with my uh, my best friends in the whole of my brothers. You know, like people like like you're describing JJ as, yeah. you know, someone yeah. I've grown up, people I've grown up with and then been through so much with to get to that point, brothers and everything. Just, just amazing, right? And, you know, we all just look at each other. And 
actually, I'll bring you to a time before that. We were playing the Fillmore on Waking the Fallen in 2003. And the guys came out to see us because they're, they're in the Bay Area, obviously, live there. And, you know, Robert Trujillo and James Hetfield come backstage. At this time, I'm 18 years old. I remember it very well. I was 18. I wasn't 19 yet. And, you know, I was like, oh, my God, they just came into our teeny tiny little dressing room back here at, at the film. And we're like, cool. And Robert's like, who's a friend of mine now? But at the time, like, looks at my bass. He's like, he's like, oh, Music Man. That's cool, man. I was playing Music Man at the time. Door shut to close up. And I just start playing like the fastest I've ever played, just like with like enthusiasm. And our and our drummer, our late drummer, uh, Jimmy the Rev Sullivan, me and him just like embrace each other in a hug. We're like, this is amazing. That, that was just them coming out and checking out our show. Wow. Then three years later, we do that. Then four years after that, we do, uh, we open up the Viking Stadium with them to get, uh, together. And then we did, <laughs> and then in 2018, we did an entire summer tour of all the stadiums in, uh, uh, around the country. And I was like, that's in, and then we're friends with them. You know, it's like, yeah, that's the yeah. weird shit that, like, you're talking but it's, about. Does it like, ever get, does it ever get lost on you? I mean, because I, I hope it doesn't, and, I, and I'm sure it you doesn't. Know. And, you know? Yes. If I'm being completely honest, and, and maybe maybe you can, uh, maybe not exactly the same way, but you know, it get it gets lost in the sauce, is the way that I like to say. It. On a day to day basis, yes, it does get lost. It takes those moments for me to like sit back, and I try to do these a little bit more. And I'm just learning to do it in the last four years now that I've been home for so long, and you know, everyone's gone through some shit in the last four years, obviously. Um, but like, and realizing sitting back and thinking about stories like that. And there's others, right? We both have other stories similar to those things, like, like the J.J. Abrams or the Metallica thing, and, or about just being brothers and all the, all the great things that we've had along the way. And just looking back and going, those are amazing. I actually have done that. That's, that's crazy. But then also realizing that it's also not everything. What's everything is, a, is that friendship that I have with everybody. What's it, the, those moments that I share with them. And it's, it's really cool to sit back <sighs> Not cool. It's an, it's a necessity for me to remind myself of those things these days. Yeah, you know, instead of it's it's it, it is a balance. It, like you're saying, it is a balance to be able to go because what's important is where you are right now. That's yeah. the most important. Absolutely. thing. it's your family. Nothing else matters. Nothing. But but the fact that we get to do the things that we get to do, um, it does get lost on me. Actually, to, to be honest, you know, because it becomes normal, and you're like, I can't believe I'm and, until until you. Oh, you're not working for six months more. Right. Like you guys, when you're can't in the grind, the like it, it, it might sound to other people like we're jaded by it. And I'm not saying that we're jaded necessarily by the truest uh, form of, of that of that phrase. It's that you're you're working so so much on that. Those are your goals. Those are the things. Your your head's down. You kind of got these blinders on while you're working, and then you got to take them off every once in a while and go like, because you still have goals, right? Like you still have yeah. goals that are higher than where you're even oh, at right yeah. now, of course. And you've accomplished yeah. so much. So to other people, yeah. it's like, well, where can you go from there? It's like, oh, I've got goals, people. You know, <laughs> like it's like, I know. And it, so, and then you look back and you go like, wait a minute. Oh, I have done some pretty cool shit in the last 20, 25 years. Yeah. My, my, <laughs> uh, I have a neighbor two doors down, Bruce Watson, uh, who is the guitar player for Foreigner. Mm. And he is awesome. And he, came over i'm like dude you're coming over to my house you're literally two houses away That's and he walked wild. in we had we had coffee and i'm like dude i'm such a fan i can't he's like what are you talking he has all these questions for me i have all these questions for him but it came down to this very thing that we're talking about where i'm like he goes the thing for him was longevity like he's like i can't believe a whole new audience is discovering our music and we're they're out on tour again but the what covid did was really remind us all how lucky we are to be doing the way we're, what we're do, being able to do. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's crazy. It's, it, I mean, I couldn't agree with you more there on that. Like that, that was the eye opening things being home and stuff like the things that we know matter, you know, you know it in your head, but it's like, wait a minute, no, this, Oh, yeah. this really does matter more than I even realized, you know, like yeah. it's, it's yeah. a whole, it's a whole fucking thing, man. But <laughs> yeah. we could, we could go into that and everyone's, heard enough about that shit so let, let's move on but uh no it's 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 just interesting that you asked that question because um for you uh with this with this whole jj abrams thing and then i know that there there's some that uh 
I wanted to ask you about our producer and I were talking about the uh, the show Lost that you guys that, mm-hmm. that he was creating. You were you were you were on as the the guy who drove the plane or whatever. Yeah, the pilot of the plane. So when you're, did you know that like so they allude to it being in purgatory at the end of it, right? That that's kind of like where it comes. Yeah, but you, you got to remember. Here's the way it happened for me. I was I was doing I was doing something else and and I was in a deal with a network to do another show, whatever. And JJ was like. I got a great role for you. You got to come out and do this. And I'm like, okay. Um, uh, so I come to come to find out that that the pilot was supposed to be Victor Garber was going to play the pilot, and they were also going to have um, Michael Keaton was involved in in the early stages of possibly being on Lost. But you can't kill off a character, a guy like Michael Keaton. I think it was Michael Keaton, someone like that. You can't kill him off because the advertisers are buying the future of the show potentially. So you're promising a character that's going to die. So then JJ goes, all right, I have a great role for you. Just come out to Hawaii. I'm like, oh, okay. So I get <laughs> One there. of those cool moments. I get to go film <laughs> with my friend from kindergarten in Hawaii. That doesn't suck. Yeah. And I'm thinking, <laughs> what is this, Gilligan's Island? Like, I didn't know anything about Lost. <laughs> yeah, I don't totally. Know what it was. Yeah. And um, so I go to wardrobe and they fit me in the pilot's outfit. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And then they're, then they're talking about like, oh, they're going to put blood all over you. And I'm like, oh. So I, I realize oh, I'm the pilot of the plane. Then he gives me the sides. And I'm looking at the script, and and uh, and it was just the coolest thing to be able to come alive and then get eaten by a smoke monster in <laughs> basically five minutes. So yeah. I'm only on the show for five minutes, and then I also um, I did a flashback episode many many years later. But still, it was such a crucial, pivotal thing. It was a, again a great cameo, a great small role, um, and that's and I'm a character actor. I, I, I you know do that all day long, um, but. Uh, that was one of those where I, and, and it's been this way for, with Matt Reeves, who's another old, old friend of mine, um, a bunch of people, they call and I talk to them and they say, Hey, I've got something for you. I say yes, before they even tell me what they're working on, because mm-hmm. it's the people, number one, every project, when someone says to you, Hey man, um, could you come in and do a session with me on this thing? You're like, yes. What are they going to, I mean, it, it's going to, it's, you know the people are good. You know that it's going to evolve. You're going to be working together. It's collaborative. There's a structure, but you're going to be able to play. I trust certain you know people, and I trust more and more people as I work with them. And it's it's just a blast to be able to have a few people. I'm just lucky that I have a couple of people that kind of reach out to me and go, okay, I know Greg Solid. I know he's going to make this more than what's on the page, and 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 that's exactly what happens. It's just we we end up having a, having a good time and. That was one that was just wild, man. That was so crazy. Well, the reason why I wanted to ask you, because you have a unique take on not just one of the other actors on board there, being friends with uh, with JJ and the writers there, the criticism at the time, and we're yeah. going back quite a bit, was it's like they're like, well, do they know where this is going? Do they know? That was like the behind the scenes. Everyone was like, do they know where this is going? Did you right. have a privy answer to what was coming at the end before they ultimately got to the final episode? No, but remember, I was oh, just because I was friends. Just because you're friends with them, not because you were on the cast or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, No, I mean, there were a show like that back then, especially. There were it was all so top secret, Mm -hmm. and you know they talk about it. He and Damon Lindelof, who who, you know they're basically it was their show. Um, It was, I I think they were like, all right, let's let's make a a kick. They had no time because it was a failed script and pilot, and they were like, we really like this concept. ABC said, let's do this. And, and they had no time to actually make it happen, and they did it. But I think they were like, all right, let's just see what happens. And all of a sudden, the response was great. J- JJ directed one of the best pilots ever. And suddenly, it was now they were like, oh, shit, now what do we do? Now we got to create a great first season, which they had kind of, I mm-hmm. think, from the interviews I've seen and I've talked to JJ, they were like figuring it out. And I think TV is like that because it's you don't know what streamers – it's a good thing if you're a, a giant 800 pound gorilla in our business and they know, all right, we're going to order five seasons. That's yeah. very rare. So they don't know week to week, whether they're going to get canceled. They try and think of seasonal arcs and right. then, Oh, we'll, we'll try. But to do a show like that, that's so, um, that, that is, uh, so binge worthy and, and people just c- couldn't get enough of it week after week, water cooler conversation. It's hard to stay ahead of the audience, hard to not be s- too complicated, which they do get, Heroes got too complicated. Loss got too complicated. You're like, what's that's, going on? That's so funny because it was around the same time that you're doing that and he's over here doing Lost. I mean, that yes. those were the two biggest shows that had that dialogue, that water cooler dialogue that you're describing right now. Yeah. And it was, it was, 
there were times on Heroes where we get the script and I'm like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do here. Like, I can say the words, but what? And then mm. also, there, you know, you're trying to service a big cast like that. I remember Milo and I um, once we had this moment where I, I fly in on Adrian's back and there's a warehouse and Mossy's there and Milo's there. The last time I saw Milo, he was trying to kill me and we don't make any reference to it. We're like, all right, guys, here's what we got to do. They're in the other room. We should. And Milo was like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I fucking hate this guy. Yeah, yeah, Did yeah. Did we forget this? I tried to kill him. Yeah. And then the writers, that, the writer that was on set was like, oh, shit. Oh, you're right. And so it's like, you know, everybody. That's put- interesting. Yeah, because you're trying to keep up. Like, that makes sense. So that, 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 that pretty much answers my question on that. Is really like, you're just trying to keep up with that overarching yes. story. Are you a fan of, uh, as an actor, and the way you're describing it, I'm a huge professional wrestling fan. Are you into that at all? Um, I no, I, I I'm not. I appreciate the theatrics of it. I appreciate the story. The characters are really interesting. I I worked on um, uh, was it Psych? Oh shoot, I think it was called Psych. Oh, the show, the USA show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was called mid- Psych. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the Miz, Miz was a guest. Miz was a guest on it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I was on that episode. So yeah. I played the producer director of this sort of um, dating, like uh, The Bachelor, and The Miz was on. And I remember Mike and I met, and I, I immediately I was like, "This guy's going to be a massive, massive actor. Like yeah. he gets it, dude. He is so smart, really good looking, funny, and everything. But really smart, and and he's subtle and." I, he still has not shown his chops at all. He's so, so massive and right. with, you know, Miz and Mrs. and, and all that. Absolutely. Um, but he's just one of those guys. So I've always had an appreciation for it. I've crossed paths with a bunch of, uh, of you know, wrestling guys. But um, no, I, I'm not like you. Yeah, not yeah, like, yeah. you know, you can well, no, I just I just brought it up because when you were, you know, you're talking about keeping up with that storyline and stuff, but and then like that backstory and that water cooler conversations that was happening for that in wrestling, that's kind of like for, for guys fans like myself will call her geeks whatever we like yeah. to we like to talk about it. now there's social media to do it which I, I was gonna circle back to all that with heroes and lost the internet was around but it didn't have this web 2 movement of social media where everyone's on twitter talking about it and stuff like you're hearing about it from the water coolers maybe maybe you're savvy enough to be in a chat room and that's about it you know like yeah but but what people don't get right you pour your heart into an album and then Someone listens to it and you'll see a comment right now that's like, you know what? Could you guys, could you maybe add a little bit more uh, where the song kind of fades out here? They should really carry that out. To, and you're like, dude, I recorded that seven months ago. <laughs> no shit. What are you talking about? The, the comments we hear, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, this character should really do this and this. And like, the whole series has been in the can for, for yeah. a year. Not only We've that, I, d- I didn't. Effects. I didn't realize that you were a writer. Like you just write back. I didn't realize you'd written. What, what right. have you written? Should I read what you've written before? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> but but going back, there used to be a time when showrunners. I remember JJ telling this where he's like, I I can't. Uh, I just don't want to hear read the fan letters and read the emails and read mm-hmm. all that stuff because somebody might say something that they inadvertently are talking about something that happens three episodes from now but if i respond then it seems like i got the idea from them and i stole it so that's why you know you hear all the time i can't accept unsolicited material it has to go through a lawyer or an agent before it gets to you just to protect the artist saying this was officially submitted on this day whatever um today though with some of these longer arc series that are still working you'll hear stuff and the buzz they they will and and also the analytics of like Netflix knows whether somebody is watching an episode, turns it off after five minutes. You know what? If a character a character comes on in that store and then eh, they turn it off, man, you know the producer's hearing that, the writer's hearing that and going, eh, they don't like her so much. I mean, talk about, you know, the minutia of it. When they test a pilot, that were back in the day they used to do this, they would go into the mall, uh, malls across the country and take stores that are um, abandoned or, you know, still are for rent. And they would set up these uh, little, you know, chairs and a theater and and these things where, um, what was it called? Um, I forgot the rating system, but it's a knob. If you mm-hmm. like what you're seeing, you turn it to the right. If you don't like what you're seeing, you turn it to the left. If it's just okay, you just keep it in the middle. Right. 
So you be, they, they bring people in the mall. They go, hey, you want to make $10 and come watch a TV show, a new TV show? And they would go based on that. And then mm-hmm. that information comes back. They still do it, but they don't do it like that. And it's like the Nielsen family. company Nielsen, does Nielsen. it. Nielsen, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And they used to put boxes on TV, people's TVs and, and you know, they would rate. And if you were a Nielsen family, man, you had the power. And um, But even today, the analytics, there's so much information that they can find out. And they can adjust is what and my whole point is like, right. they might be a couple episodes ahead, but they they can adjust the story. They can adjust their edit. They can right. go back and go, yeah, let's cut that out. People aren't responding to that. Let's, sorry, we're See, losing that, that kinda, story. Line. To me, that kind of loses the art a little bit, the way you're describing it. Cause I'm like, so I'm imagining it in my line of work and I'm like, well, we don't do that. There's no way I would ever do that. Right. Even if we could, I, there's no way. Cause it would just disrupt what we're trying to create so much as the artist. Like, yes. We, I mean, we, we don't even as, I mean, I could only speak for my band. We don't chase the hits. Like if that song worked, it's not like we're going to try to recreate that song on the next album yeah. just because it yeah. sounds to me like they're chasing the hits. These writers and producers that you're describing right now are just chasing the hits. And I, a, a, I, yeah, I, I don't like them, that. <laughs> I got to say, man, I don't like that. Look, there are, there are so many elements that you as a as an artist don't realize through osmosis that's what's and that it can't it can't help it you okay. hear something you think you don't you don't think about it whatever but then when you're in the studio you're like oh yeah this would be great you don't know where it came from but it, it, you picked it up you know through you're right that, i mean that's kind of what you i mean that's kind of what we train ourselves to do right as artists is to take in the yes. inspiration and just be ready for it i mean that's what that's literally the whole gig of, of being inspired yeah but it shouldn't be <laughs> People don't like this baseline. No, of course. Well, I'm not going to play that. that. Can't do that. Oh, my God. Or trying to please the audience, like you said, because that thing's a hit. This type of music's working right now, so let's try and copy it. Like, no. And that shit never ends up working that. anyway. That's my yeah. to my point, too. Like, maybe the writers and producers are just now into this right now. Hopefully, it'll, it'll, they'll learn how to manage that a little bit, hopefully, because, like, it, I could tell from music, at least, that doesn't work like bands and artists try to do that. They don't have the longevity. Let's just put no. it that way. So it's yeah. like, you don't try to recreate that. That's very no. interesting though. We could go on for like a long time about that. I know you got a little bit more, uh, we only got a little bit more time with you. And there's a couple things yeah. I wanted to get to before I let you go. Then we're going to have so much more to talk about fast friends. Dude, let's do a this. part this two. Awesome. Let's Absolutely. save my print story for a part two. Oh, you want to do that? Okay. Cool. Well, I do follow ups with just audio. So maybe we'll save that for that. How about that? Oh, good. That's good. Yeah, so when yeah. we, the week we release this, I'll just be giving you a phone call. We'll catch up with that. We'll talk about that in a second. But there's two things that there's two other roles that I wanted to ask you about. Yeah, uh, there there's m- smaller roles, but still to me, two of my favorite movies is first, uh, you're the you're the guy in the in the stands with the T for Austin Powers, uh, <laughs> gold member. <laughs> uh, that with the with, with the whole boobs flying the the spaceship that yes. looks like boobs. And uh, all right, I love let me that. tell you. Let me tell you the story behind that real quick. Please do. That's I, what I, want. I, I, I. Many years ago, many years before that, I had done a, a Rolaids commercial. And if you look up Greg Grunberg Rolaids commercial, you will not believe how funny it is. And it's me at a Buffalo Bills game, and I'm and it's and I'm cheering in the stands, and I'm like, come on! And it's the snow's coming down, and I'm topless. It's it's freezing cold, but I I'm, think have I no know shirt. that commercial. Oh yeah, I and think then there's I know a, that one. yeah, there's a guy who's playing my dad. And then there's a guy playing my grandpa, and we all have no shirt on. Yeah, and it's and it's like roll aids, it blah 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 blah. But and and it was such a famous commercial that I was on Jay Leno for it as a, as a during the Super Bowl. We were up in the stands and we were like yeah, and we had no shirt on um, because of that. Then they're doing uh, Austin Powers. I was a huge Austin Powers fan, and they they uh, decided they wanted that, and they said they got a hold of my brother who's really funny, really talented actor. And Brad, right? Is he, that, is that yeah, and Brad. And yeah. Brad plays the other T in tits. It's, we spell <laughs> Titans, but yeah. we spell tits. And um, and so they were like, well, do you think your brother would do it? Because at that time I was doing stuff. And mm-hmm. and uh, and I said, oh my God, to work with my brother and to be in a movie that I love? Yes. So I didn't get to work with any of the, the it was the second unit. We shot uh-huh. it, you know, but if you go back, dude, you're not going to believe this. It goes from Masi Oka, who played Hero on Heroes, right? To me in that Whoa. montage. That's incredible. I yeah. didn't realize. Oh, that's right. He's a. Uh, I, I know this movie very well. So now that I'm picturing it, yeah, he's definitely in that. Yeah, and then he does, he's in that montage, and then it goes to Fred Stoller, who's like 
melons who no, wants some melons. juicy melons? melons yeah 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 yeah, yeah. that's amazing that, that I mean, that's incredible and that's you're just one of the many celebrities that were in that because if you remember that was gold member when he brought in tom cruise and gwyneth paltrow and danny DeVito. oh yeah and, that's and, right so you're just one of the many celebrities that that that's made it true. That, the extra celebrities that made it on there and, yeah. and hero there as well the what other, was the other role what the, was the other, other role, role? was in basketball as, oh dude dude i am such a matt stone and trey parker fan those guys can do no wrong in my there's just they're just brilliant in so many ways musicianship yeah. songwriting oh god uh, south Incredible. park obviously and all the book of mormon the book of mormon i mean the list goes on and on like you, yeah and yeah. i don't know if you did you see the 25th anniversary thing they did at red rocks no it's on paramount plus go check it out we'll text about it afterward it's a, it's a pretty quick watch it's amazing what i loved about it is not knowing not seeing them too much in interviews or anything like that i'm just a fan of their creations more so but in that concert they do a little bit of back and forth and tell a little bit of story where they came from they seem so humble still at the same time which i is, can't wait i love seeing that you know what i mean like they're just so oh, brilliant yeah. and like and I'm a huge Primus fan as a bass player. Les Claypool is a, is a god oh, yeah. to me. So it's yeah. <laughs> like no, the whole guys, thing all together. Those guys are beyond brilliant. And, and uh, they're so, but you think about the level at which they crank out their show consistently. And then to do, what was it called? All American, uh, um, the, the movie that they did, the animated movie that uh, they did. Uh, Team America, World Police. Yeah, Team America. And the then, puppets, but man. then, then you go see Book of Mormon. Absolutely, nine was one of the most nine brilliant. Tonys. Those oh guys who, who who grew up in Colorado next to each other. Going yeah. back to you and JJ, like I mean, like these guys grew up next to each other, met in college, that were yeah. two towns away from each other. Create this whole thing and win nine Tonys in a in a in a place where they were never supposed to be. Let's be right. honest. You know what I mean? Right. Like that's that's such a cool story to me. It's a cool story. I auditioned for that. I got the part. And I got to be an, a New Jersey informant. I remember getting there and going, this could be the dumbest thing. And I'm trusting. I, I had no choice. I was happy to have the day of work. You know? <laughs> yeah. And and I was, and to be able to go, you know, it, it, he's, he, it's just, it was like to be in that competition to actually, I mean, it's one of the things that people always, I go to comic cons and people are always like, dude, New yeah. Jersey informant. <laughs> yeah. Well, the psych outs were like, the, like that's when the level of psych outs, I like, go oh, crazy. If I remember correctly, I was gonna I was gonna go rewatch that scene. I'll be completely honest; I didn't get yeah. a chance to yet. But yeah. like, so is it is it the one where he has the aluminum foil? Is that yes. was that yes? Okay, I thought I thought so. And yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah, makes yeah, a yeah. gag for and I'm it. Just like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. But I remember. And by the way, those guys. I remember getting there and just going, "These guys are the worst actors in the world." I didn't quite get the tone of it wow. because they're so brilliant. Yeah. I was completely, I mean, I didn't say that. I was like, I was like, what is no, the tone no. of it? And then, but I was fans of theirs. And then uh, they couldn't have been nicer. They're so, they're just so talented. And that supporting cast, all of those oh, guys are yeah. great. Everybody, so everybody in them. That was one of the movies for me that I was watching. I was like, and it came after like Orgasmo and stuff. So you had, they, they, they were like uh, the Broken Lizard Club or whatever that did. Yeah, uh, yeah, did super yeah. Bad and stuff. Or I'm um, sorry, su not super bad, Super Troopers. Like yeah. that whole and and those movies, they they kind of had that early on too with yeah. Maxon and Trey Parker and the other guys. They it kind of kept it in the family for a long time there. Yeah, I mean those guys are doing Tacoma FD now, and yeah. and and there and I and um, Hassie Harrison was in uh, um, in uh, Max Reload and the Other Blasters, okay. and I and she went in and auditioned for them. They they were like, yeah, she was good, and then I called them up. And I know one of, I know a couple of them. And I Broken Lizards guys did they did a, 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 a telethon type thing leading up to Tacoma FD coming out at or no it was a Broken Lizard thing at my building because right. we have streaming technology and all this stuff. So oh, they yeah. were there and I met them and we became friends and and I called them up and I said Hassi is brilliant like you you're you're dropping the ball. They ended up hiring her. She's on that show. She's been on that show. She's also on Yellowstone. She's so good, dude. I gotta She's watch that show. I have. I've seen the previews for it. It's, it's on like a True TV or something like that, right? Yeah. It's. I gotta. I gotta watch it because I've been a fan of those. I mean, Beer Fest uh, oh. on the on the road when we're in in our bus and like finding movies at, like at the end of the night and the bus is rolling and we're having a couple of drinks. Beer yeah. Fest is one of those things that's got to go on and just makes you. Want, and it just makes us want to grab a boot and just go for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. Big ass spider 
two movies you need to see. Yes. Absolutely need to see. Big Ass Spider. Big Ass Spider and Group Sex. I co-wrote Group Sex. I star in Group Sex. It is so, I'm so proud of it. Uh, Larry Trilling co-wrote it, produced it, directed I just, it. He's, I just got those in, in, in my research uh, just a little bit ago. And I was like, oh, I got, I got to check this one out. Oh, you'll I, love them. Awesome. I can't Those wait. two movies, you'll love them. I'm absolutely going to check it out. Thank you so much for the time. Real quick, though, we got we to gotta prop out some more of this uh, awareness for the epilepsy and, the, and, yep. and, and everything. So where can they go to get the help that they need if that's what they're looking for or maybe even to help spread the word or donate or anything like that? Yeah, it's, you don't have to be part of the epilepsy community, uh, which is millions and millions of people, unfortunately. But go to, first of all, go to talkaboutit.org. That's my website. You'll see every celebrity in the world. You're going to see Johnny on there soon. I'm roping you into a PSA. I'm telling you. Um, and uh, so go to talkaboutit.org. Check out the podcast. Talk about it. You'll learn. It's fun. It's, believe me, it, it, you know, we, we do talk about epilepsy a lot, whatever, but go check out the Caregiver Series, thecaregiverseries.com, and know that Thank you're God. not alone. Uh, we are here for you. We have a strong community, and you're going to get through whatever you're going through. And if you don't have anything to do with the epilepsy community, just check it out. It's entertaining, and you'll know what to do in case you see someone have a seizure because it's very basic, it's very simple, but you could save someone's life. That's awesome, man. I really appreciate the time. I appreciate you. We're going to get back to that Prince story. Yeah. I'll get you on the phone for that one. We'll do a part two. Everyone tune in for the, to the podcast. Yeah, for that. part two, we'll talk about we'll talk about um, Paterno when I worked with Al Pacino. Oh. Played his son for three weeks. Talk about Spielberg, the new movie that's coming out at the end of the year called The Fablemans. I'm in that, which is awesome. That's I'd, coming out soon. Okay. And my Prince story. Those, Those three, three things. things. We're going to get on part two. It's so awesome. Thank you very much, Greg. Get back to Dude, the Dude, my pleasure. I appreciate you very much, man. All right, man. Take care. Man, that was awesome. It was better than I even I could have expected. Super rad having Greg on the show. Um, as you guys know, we never really know where these conversations are going to go. It's very free form here. And uh, I think we just made a new friend here at Drinks with Johnny. So I appreciate it. As he said, go check out all those wonderful things to help out with those people struggling with epilepsy. Or if you're one of those who needs the, needs the help, make sure you go check that out um, or need some of the, uh, the pats on the back. Um, so get out there and uh, everyone go check out the podcast as well. This is available on audio side. That's probably where we'll have part two here coming up later in the week. So until then, as always. Cheers.